What's up guys, Blue Server here, and this is Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. This will be my review of the game. Right, let's get started. Wait. Raiden, a badass cyborg who defies the laws of physics and makes it look easy. The game starts off with Raiden working for a PMC organisation called Maverick Security, who are currently in charge of protecting the African Prime Minister. And we all know how well his last escort mission went. He at least has the decency to die without dragging Raiden through guard infested areas whilst holding hands and stopping for a break every two minutes to tell us his life story. Anyway, he spent most of the game chasing after the guys that murked him off. While along the way, Raiden gets in touch with his inner child. Anyone who has not skipped the cutscenes near the end of Metal Gear Solid 2 will know what I'm talking about. That nickname you love so much. Wanna know how I got it? Actually, why don't I give you a demonstration? I think it's time for Jack to let her rip! I think the story is quite weak for a Metal Gear game, but still think it's slightly better than 2, and much better than whatever the hell Peace Walker was talking about. Something about deterring a deterrent with a deterrent, I don't know. I enjoyed Raiden's development throughout this game, but all the others seemed a bit boring. The most interesting one I found was an AI wolf you recruit early on, who usually scouts ahead on missions and will talk to Raiden throughout the story. The support characters were only decent if you spent some time talking to them on the codec, but previous Metal Gear games made me like the characters without needing to, excluding Peace Walker of course. The gameplay is great, you can use a mixture of light and heavy attacks combined with blade mode to make some exciting and rewarding combos, although I'll get used to seeing this a lot. When you decide to go mental in blade mode, you can do something called Zandatsu, or cut and take in English. You don't have to do it, but it'll replenish your health and energy. As you progress with the game, you'll unlock more upgrades and weapons which can really help tackle certain situations you get into. Like the pole is great for crowd control, the sign is great for stunning enemies and closing the distance, and finally these. One big feature is parrying your enemies by moving towards them and pressing the light attack when they're about to hit you. If you time this perfectly, it can lead to one shot in your enemies. The problem is, this doesn't always work because of how you have to execute it. It can feel delayed sometimes, it feels as though you should have hit your enemies sometimes, but you didn't. Keep another controller on standby because I felt like I was breaking my analog stick every single time I was trying to parry enemies, especially when I had to keep parrying over and over again on some of the bosses. I'm looking at you two. There were also some sneaking sections in the game that I enjoyed. I felt like Assassin's Creed if Ezio was more acrobatic. You don't have to sneak at all, but it makes getting through certain areas easier and does help add variety to the game. There is a lot of quick time events in this game, but they never bothered me that much. They give you plenty of time and usually don't punish you that much for messing up. This game is quite short. I watched all the cutscenes, took my time and the stealth sections. I managed to complete the game in 5 hours. This game seems like it was made to be played through more than once. But there's three major problems that annoyed me when I was playing through this game. Sometimes the camera would act up in small spaces, like forcing me to just stay in a corner and spam the parry and hope I'd counter. Against the bosses, they attack you so frequently and attack you so much while taking so much damage, I just didn't want to make any mistakes, so all I did against them was just spam the light attack button and kept mashing my left stick towards them in hope that if they actually did attack me, I'd counter them. I mean, this wasn't a problem early on, but later when the bosses started to take a lot more damage, it started to become just stupid. And the AI on this game just doesn't give a fuck. If you're surrounded by groups of guys, they don't care if they're going to hurt their teammates while attacking you. You can be fighting like two robot wolves and two of their squad members, and they'll, some guys in the background will be firing grenades and rockets at you. I've had a moment where I've just been juggled constantly by that tactic. I can't, I've even lost count of how many times I've become a gecko's cushion because they attack you off screen too. Also, the blade mode doesn't always work when you're using the analogue. Riding either cuts where you don't want, or just doesn't bloody cut at all. The environments aren't that interesting, but the game was made so you can cut more stuff in the environment, so I can't complain. 
Overall, it's a great hack and slash game with decent story, likeable but not too interesting characters, a few problems with the combat, but most of the time, I'd let it go because of how exciting and what the combat felt. The boss fights were decent, but they did drag on for a while. The great soundtrack in the background made them epic, though. I'm giving Metal Gear Rising an 8 out of 10. Thanks for watching, and for you people that decided to stick around this long, here's a little bonus clip. Can't fight nature, Jack. Wind blows, rain falls, and the strong prey upon the weak. Ugh. Sam tells me you see your weapon as a tool. Something that saves lives, a means of justice. Now there's a pretty beam. Exquisite. It spared you the burden of all the lives you Absolved you of guilt with it.